So I've been watching a bunch of vegan versus carnivore debates. I just watched that Anthony Chafee versus Dr. Vegan guy. In my opinion, the vegan guy destroyed him with intellect, but Anthony comes back with his main claim is that, well, I'm seeing a lot of people get better on the carnivore diet that used to be vegan. Ow. So it's like, something's wrong with your science, buddy. I think I figured it out. If you're debating, which one do I do? Vegan, carnivore, omnivore? I have a thing you might not have thought of. I am a vegan. You are a loser. I'm at Casa Loma. I just filmed a video on my camera channel here, and I figured I had an idea for you guys too. So all these carnivore versus vegan debates, I've been debating it internally for a long time. I was vegan for a long time and then I switched to carnivore, felt a lot of benefits, things weren't right long term, so I switched back, ended up getting a flare up and then like that wasn't working, then I went back to carnivore, I was like, oh, that's better. And then ethically, something always pulls me back to veganism. And so like here I am again, kind of struggling. The skin breaks out here and there and the odd bit of gas, it's like really annoying. So like I'm always debating. Do I switch back to carnivore? Do I stay here and ride the storm? Here's my deal. It's very obvious if you look at the science that plants have benefits. Each one of them, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, grains and beans, they all have some thing in them that says you're gonna live longer if you eat these. There's so much science just showing you like people live longer that eat beans. Berries are very good for you. Resveratrol and grapes, wow, nice. All these leafy greens, you cannot beat them. Plants have benefits. That doesn't mean you have to go vegan, but plant-based diets seem to make you live longer. They just reduce all cause mortality. And there's all the science, all the like well-meaning vegan doctors seem to be showing you that and it's very obvious. And no carnivores are debunking those claims. So on the other hand, you have the carnivores who are still healing. They tried veganism, it didn't work. They switched to carnivore and then all their symptoms go away for the most part, usually. Usually you hear it's like, I'm almost healed. You're, you're still suffering, but like you're better than you were as a vegan, hippie vegan loser. Here's the thing you may not have thought of. When it comes to all this vegan science and vegans live longer, it's a long-term plan for ultimate long life. Healing disease like heart disease, major things like that, stroke, cancer, you go plant-based and you live a decent, maybe 90 to 100 years old, wow. Carnivores focus more on the short-term health challenges like acne, farting, joint pain. Things that don't seem to matter as much, they're important as you're feeling them. It's like, who wants to be in pain or look fugly as hell and your forehead's got a rash for like nine months straight? It sucks. So you go carnivore, you heal that thing, but you might increase your chance of dying long-term from all the major things that veganism heals. So it's like, you weigh the balance. Carnivore is the short-term reward with potential longevity, but like all the science shows, all these antioxidants and stuff, like that's what's helping you, and you remove all of them, you're, it's in God's hands at that point. Like, I don't know, man. You might live. And to me, like I'm thinking, if you healed everything that's wrong with you on a carnivore diet, how could that possibly be unhealthy long-term? I'm with you. I had the same thoughts when I was carnivore and all of a sudden my nose got like way less bunged up with gunk. Like I could breathe and I'm like, that's something that healed. Like that's deep stuff, deep inflammation that's going away by me eating supposedly inflammatory meat. So I felt like I was healing at a deep level. I just, I could not sustain it. I was exhausted and I'm looking for answers. Like, why am I so tired? I had energy in the beginning, but something went haywire and then I'm like looking for sugar, I'm trying to get like no fiber sources of sugar, like ketchup and mango ice cream. Like that's when you saw me doing, oh, he's not really carnivore. That was after like seven months of trying to be carnivore, eating nothing but meat. 
It's like, it's a weird conundrum, man. You also have to think of just common sense. Animals are hard to catch. I have no desire to catch them. Whenever I see one, I want to pet it. I hope it doesn't bite me. I'm trying to film it. Animals are cool. Insects are another story. I still think insects are cute. I save little ladybugs when they're on my celery. I'm like, here you go, little buddy. Stay over there. I won't juice you. And so like, I, I have compassion for all beings. So it's like, just common sense says that the carnivore diet obviously is not what humans are meant to do. So that might play a huge factor in it. Maybe you were raised as a hunter and you have no thoughts or emotions left in your bony body. And you're just like, whatever, I'll kill anything. My dad taught me how to do it. You kill raccoons with a knife and you have no soul. Okay, whatever. You have fun with that life. So me, like, obviously, I know I could alleviate some of the symptoms I feel as a vegan by going carnivore, but I worry about long-term health. All the science points to it not being the best. The Inuit do not live super long lives. They never did. These, like, Maasai tribes, they die in their 40s or 50s. It's not a longevity answer. Maybe it is, though. Maybe you'll prove us all wrong. There's some people, Art Devaney, still going. I know I said he died a long time ago, but he's, apparently he's still alive. He's like in his 80s. Dr. Bernstein, 89. You can live. How long do you even want to be on this hell earth? Anyway, so like I'm with you. And meat is so much easier. The main reason I debate going back is just the ease of it all and traveling. Like I have to go to Ottawa for Christmas this year. How am I going to do that? as what I'm doing now, like I'm juicing and making these big salads and I'm fermenting nut yogurts. How the hell am I gonna bring that life and take it on the road? It's like, wow, it's difficult. Whereas if you're carnivore, it's like, okay, rotisserie chicken tonight, yep. I might do carnivore plus flax oil. Huh, Brooke Goldner, you approve? You don't, but the reasons I've stayed vegan so long, 10 months now, straight, Hardly any mishaps happen there. 10 months as a vegan, still struggling with like gas and acne. It's for the animals and ow, for the potential long-term benefits of me living longer. This damn zipper keeps grabbing my gray hairs, but most things are better for me on the vegan diet. My mental clarity is actually really good while fasting on this high fat vegan diet. Things are great. And my skin was clearing until a couple weeks ago. I don't know what happened, but we hit a bump and they are clearing again. So it might actually fully clear one day and we'll figure it out. But like everything's better. No pain in the body. Only my beard hairs when this zipper grabs it. Like no joint pain. Ah, life is good. I'm strong, happy, healthy, fit. Things are good. So let me know why you decide these things. Did you give up on veganism and went carny for the short-term fix and are willing to die no matter what? Like, who cares? I fixed, I feel good now, I don't care what happens later. We just focus on the now, asshole. I'm with you. How you doing? You thumbing up the video? That's nice. Thumbs down. If you have decided to make a raccoon broth, but you're adding beans and berries for the antioxidants, even though boiling kills them all. That's fine. That's fine to you. Raccoon meat is not known as a longevity meat, so there's a lot of hair you have to shave. They eat empty containers of ice cream. Ice cream's not an antioxidant. I'm going to leave. How are you doing? You subscribing for more videos? I'll see you in the next one.